Welcome back to SST8's series on co-teaching. This webinar is the How of Co-Teaching, Session 3, Step 3. This co-teaching webinar series is designed to be viewed in order and the skills, knowledge, and team activities were scaffolded to build and strengthen your partnership. If you have not yet watched the webinars titled The Why Behind Co-Teaching, The What of Co-Teaching, and the How of Co-Teaching, Session 3, Steps 1 and 2, please find, view, and complete the activities associated with those webinars first, and then come back and join us for this webinar in the series. The intent of these webinars is for co-teaching teams to collaboratively view and discuss this content while providing flexibility in meeting their professional development needs. For example, Teams may choose to chunk the content and break it up over multiple days, or may wish to use it as part of a professional development day. To support your learning during this session, you can access the accompanying bit.ly link to follow along in the slide deck with live links to use throughout the training. This webinar builds upon the importance of the co-teaching team creating a relationship based upon mutual respect, trust, and communication. So grab your co-teacher and let's get started. In the previous session, we focused upon strengthening the co-teaching team through sharing and reflecting upon each member's individual beliefs and practices. By completing the interview discussion, team members considered and addressed any similarities and differences. We maintain that having these discussions are critical to team development in order to co-plan, co-instruct, and co-assess all learners in an equitable and effective way. Take a moment and read the learning targets to gain clarity around what you can expect to experience and learn throughout the rest of this session. Pause the webinar if needed. This webinar builds upon the importance of the co-teaching team creating a relationship based upon mutual respect, trust, and communication. This graphic represents the structure of the co-teaching training series. If you are watching this session, this means you have the foundational knowledge and skills needed to begin building that co-teaching sandwich by completing the sessions in Tier 1 and you have begun Tier 2 training in establishing and designing the co-teaching experience. You are on your way to creating a sensational co-teaching sandwich. Even though Tier 1 sessions provided foundational knowledge and skills, we recommend continuing with Tier 2 sessions in this series to build your co-teaching relationship and put together all the ingredients to allow your team to be truly effective and benefit you as teachers, and most importantly, each of your learners. Food for thought. Take a moment and watch this video. When the video is finished, pause this webinar. Think about the advice Anne Benninghoff and Sonia Kunkel offer regarding establishing roles and responsibilities within the co-teaching classroom. How would you handle the situation presented in the video? Can you think of any other suggestions? Share your thoughts with your partner. When done, resume the webinar. Hello and welcome to Ann and Sonia's co-teaching advice column. I'm Sonia Kunkel. And I'm Ann Benninghoff. And we're here today to provide you with a few co-teaching tips from some of the frequently asked questions that we get. And we have a mailbag and I'm gonna reach into our mailbag and read something to you from one of our participants who has a question about co-teaching. All right, let's hear it. Dear Sonia and Anne, I just double checked and my records say that yes, I'm a certified special education teacher. So why am I being treated like an aide? Oh. I thought co-teaching was supposed to be about two teachers sharing all aspects of the instructional cycle. But when we sit down to co-plan, he just gives me his lesson plans and tells me which worksheets might need adapting. I'm convinced co-teaching is better than this, mm -hmm. but how do I get there? How do we get there? Signed, certified in Cincinnati. 
<laughs> well, certified in Cincinnati, we definitely want you to be fully utilized more so than an instructional assistant. While aides and paraeducators are a very valuable resource, we can't afford to have our highly qualified special educators or, or anyone underutilized in a co-taught classroom. So how do you get there? Two ideas for you. First, it's really helpful to take the time to sit down and go over a roles and responsibilities checklist to have upfront conversation about who's going to be doing what together. Some things are shared, but some things are better divvied up with one person handling it versus the other. And there is a copy of the roles and responsibilities checklist on my website, ideasforeducators.com, but you'll also get a copy if you attend a training that we're gonna tell you about soon. Um, the other idea I have for you is to think about the components of a lesson that show up regularly. Um, so as an example, things like the activator, the closure, vocabulary instruction, test review. If you find one or two of those areas that you think would lend themselves really well to working on IEP goals for students that have them, or language goals if you're an ELL co-teacher, then uh, what I would suggest is go to your co-teacher and say, hey, I have a great idea for how to do the closure and I'd really like to take that on because that will allow me to do some work on memory and study skills that students with IEP goals need, but other students could benefit from too. I find that when I offer to take on a component of the lesson and, and take that responsibility on, that's usually well received because it lessens the workload a bit for the other person. Same with teaching vocabulary acquisition strategies. You know, that's a good place where a specialist can bring their expertise and really make a difference. So sometimes it's helpful to start there with those pieces of lessons and figuring out where your expertise will fit in. Now it's your turn. You and your co-teaching partner will consider what you know about yourselves and each other from your previous activities. By now, you should have enough information to determine roles and responsibilities. Keep in mind, these can and will evolve as your knowledge, skills, confidence, and relationship develop over time. Many teams revisit this list on a yearly or biannual basis to update who does what to make your co-teaching experience as efficient and effective as possible. Open your copy of the Team Inventory Tool. Click on the Step 3 Roles and Responsibilities tab circled here in red on this slide. Pause the video to do this and begin again when both co-teachers have access to the opened Step 3 tab. Remember, both teachers will continue to work in the same document. The roles and responsibilities questions are to be answered by both the general educator and specialist working in the same sheet. It is critical that you work together when answering these questions to come to consensus. Enter responses in the column that matches your role on the team or the shared column. For instance, the first question asks who will be responsible for identifying goals and objectives for the course. As a team, indicate your response beside the question and provide any additional comments regarding why responsibilities will be shared or divided. At this time, pause the webinar to complete the co-teaching responsibilities checklist. When finished, resume the webinar. Welcome back. Taking the time to proactively designate roles and responsibilities is an important step toward building the relationship that is so critical to a successful co-taught classroom. This will positively impact the efficiency and effectiveness of collaboration before, during, and after lessons. Your signature sandwich is almost ready for the menu, but there's one more step to establishing a successful 
co-teaching environment in which to work and grow. In the next webinar, we will revisit the initial inventory activity you and your partner completed, considering team functioning within the eight components of co-teaching. Using the results of the team development inventory summary, your team will determine a goal area from one or more of the eight components to explore deeper learning and continue to develop toward true collaboration. Remember, these components are the ingredients that complement and complete the co-taught classroom. We will take a deeper dive into these eight components in subsequent webinars. How you build your sandwich will enhance the experience for the adults and each learner. As your team co-teaching practices develop, so will your effectiveness in meeting the needs of each learner. Thank you for joining us today. We hope the time spent designating roles and responsibilities allowed for you to have a better understanding as to what each partner will do for the co-taught classroom and why. Keep in mind, roles and responsibilities may evolve as your relationship strengthens and revisiting them periodically will give each partner the opportunity to contribute to their fullest capacity. Be sure to join us for the next session in the How of Co-Teaching series, Step 4, Goal Setting. We will continue to work through how you can collaboratively build an incredible co-teaching sandwich that ultimately leads to greater learner success. Be sure to join us for our next installment of the How of Co-Teaching, Session 3, Step 4. Until next time, be assured that truly collaborative partnerships take time and effort to develop. A, A great, great sandwich, sandwich is, is worth the wait. wait.